All right, so let's talk about governance, risk, and compliance. It's, this video is unplanned, unscripted, and something I've been seeing for the last year, if not months. There's a lot going on, so I think it's better to explain and give some clarification. And especially things changed after COVID. So there is a demand for the jobs in cybersecurity. And at the same time, GRC is one of the components which is in demand and there's a lot of uh, growth. So with this video, you will be able to understand in a much better way um, uh, on the GRC. So you must have heard IT audit, risk, compliance as from the GRC governance, risk and compliance. So what are those basically? And when it comes to people, if you watch me on my channel, for example, coming from the background of IT networks, engineer, system engineer, security engineer, right? The, how does it work? I mean, because it's totally different because it's not day-to-day -day operations jobs, but it's still, you know, somebody already in this field of systems and network and all this kind of administration wanted to move their career. Uh, you need to under understand and want to have to have some clarity, but also some people from the non-technical background or project management. So what GRC is all about and where are the jobs? I mean, so we'll talk about it. So governance, risk and compliance from the name, it says you need to have governance, but we'll dig more into that. And what are the risks and what kind of organization has to deal with that? Compliance is a very big piece of that. However, there are some other areas which, for example, directly related in the GRC's IT audit or security audit. We talk about security assurance. We talk about security assessment, security maturity. All those pretty much somehow directly relate to with GRC or they turn into more of a technical and tactical solution which has come to security architecture, security operations, security engineering and all that. So this is where Depending, once you have the clarity, it can help you develop your career where you want to see yourself. But in a nutshell, GRC is very close to the business, governance, risk, and compliance. So if you are in a company, or in other words, where does it work basically? Where would you see the more example of the GRC and the compliance? Basically, the banking industry, highly regulated environment. Because, or also the companies they handle with the credit card data, PCI compliance. So those companies who needs to be compliant with rules and regulation or regulatory and compliance, this is your, this is where you will see those. And from them compliance, then you have to have evaluate the risk and you got to have some governance. But it depends on the size of the organization. But if you are a small firm, you need to be compliant with because you take credit card payment. There you go, you have to be compliant with that. You can have in-house team or you outsource it. If you work for a big, large multinational banking firm, of course, they will have uh, hundreds of people in their security department and compliance and it's all together. And this is a continuous process. If you wanted to work for a big four like KPMG, where I used to work, if you wanted to work for Deloitte, in EY, in PwC, they have a whole group, internal engineering, they have their advisory. So this is where you will see those practices. If you want to build your career, uh, you got to understand overall this thing about the governance, risk, and compliance. You don't have to be an auditor. You don't have to be, have those. But as long as you understand, and of course, if you wanted to be in that direction, you can do that. But that's there. Another example for the compliance I can give it to you. If you work with a health provider or insurance company, health insurance company, or financial insurance, you know, life insurance, they have to comply with that. So in the case of health, they have to be HIPAA compliant. And HIPAA compliant deals with PHI and PIA data and all that. So I may put another video on the HIPAA itself, but that's an, another requirement. So you saw those PCI for the credit card related. When it comes to health, you have to be HIPAA compliant. So in order to become HIPAA compliant, HIPAA has the requirement. And compliance process goes to the people. They want to have some proof of the tools and the technology you have in place. So who does it? How do they make sure you're compliant? They have a process. There are people who have signatory authority to attest it. And this is where the auditor comes in. They have a checklist. They will ask you, hey, HIPAA compliant, we have, uh, we look for 10, 15 most commonly things, but, you know, uh, there are like more than 150, 200 controls you have to be comply with. So basically, this is where the auditor comes in and they will have 
to make sure you meet those requirements and then they will approve you the you know certificate or attestation and this is how you become compliant but being compliant doesn't mean your risk is reduced that's a different piece and with the adoption of cloud risk has changed i don't want to say more high or low is debatable depending but risk has changed the threat landscape has changed because you're not in your data center you are in the cloud your data has moved from on prem to the cloud to a different world right so what's the risk for some organization it really doesn't matter because they don't have to comply with and all that but there are like as i said the big four the financial the banking system the health industry yeah so the risk what we see has gone up. So how do you reduce and mitigate the risk? What are the remediation plans? So that's the whole risk assessment uh, or management framework methodology exists. So this is another area you can seek your career in the risk itself. Compliance is totally different and the risk is a very broad area. So you have to look at from all perspective, but we will talk about technology perspective. I'm not talking about a risk of branch location in a flooded zone and the flood happens. That's a business risk. We're talking about technology risk. Okay, what's the risk of putting the data in AWS cloud? What's the putting risk of the data putting in Microsoft or GCP cloud, right? How this has changed because now it used to be on your file server on your on-prem environment. Now you're putting in a file share or a SharePoint or something in the cloud. How that risk has changed? Do you have the same control or not, right? So the whole process, not in there, but all the different level of identity and users and the machine level, the VM level and all that. Now, then we have the governance at the top of the level, a governance body. And then we have the businesses. So this is how high it is, very close to the business or next to the business where you got to have some governance around that. Uh, governance is not about the technical operation, but governance is about sort of assurance you can say that so there are some governance on the enterprise level hey how do you do that on the enterprise level you know in the aws and gc what are the process and methodology exists what's the risk looks like for this application in the cloud so you've got to have some governance somebody or some group needs to be monitoring on a quarterly basis on a annually basis on all that this is where the governance piece comes in and when the company is acquired some company so you got to make sure governance model of the enterprise level exists so information security governance is a very high level. This is also, and these people work with the business information security advisor and CISO and all those where they educate the leadership and that's where information security governance. So you saw the information security governance we have. In bigger companies, you will see the enterprise risk group, right? You have a compliance. And now it comes to typical IT or IT security. We talk about the architecture, security, assurance. So these are additional components which goes to engineering, and architecture team right so when something needs to be compliant auditor will produce a report and there are some remediation needs to be done then it will go to the architecture and security team and make sure yeah, these things gets done on a timely manner over the course of a quarter or something so there are so many areas so this is why if you are coming from whatever the background you can see how much potential how much growth is there and because of the cloud there will be growth in the future as well, it's not going to go away because of the AI and machine learning and all these things. There's so much good things happening in the clouds. And that's why, you know, if you're coming from the networking background, system administration, you can do that. And if you do not have a background, you can learn some of the basics. And if you're interested in that, I can also for some videos, what are the best resources to learn, how you can grow your career in that. So that's another area. So this is where you can start learning and developing yourself. So you see the difference, right? When you are suspending of a firewall, so this is a very operational thing, right? But when you look at the control on the GRC governance, risk and compliance, you have a tools and technology to protect your data basically, right? So firewall is one of the control. It doesn't matter Cisco firewall or Palo Alto, whichever you use, they do not dictate that. So they go by the governance. So in other words, if you have a state, so there are some state rules and regulation. So, and in the state, they, develop the zoning the guidelines and all that so take an example for a police or a cop like say, if you have a speed limit on a street 35 miles an hour and if you over speed you will get fined for that 
but that speed limitation is coming from the department or the governance. They make sure, okay, school zone, their speed has to be 15 miles to 25 miles and regular speed is 35 miles. But the ticket thing issue authority or something is monitoring is the cop, is the police on the street. So this is operation. So this is your security operation. You just follow the rules and give them ticket and monitor that. But practice, the standard the, is the limitation requirement or the stop sign, this is coming from somewhere else. So that department is a governance body, government, governance department. The same thing in, in, in IT. If you need to comply with HIPAA or SOC 2 type or PC ideas, there are guidelines available. So you have to comply with that. If they, and then these policies needs to be enforced. So now their access, as I just mentioned, policies. So these companies already have tons of information security policies. But if you're a small firm, you ha this is the basic step you have to start with. So you have to small, all these policies are called around different controls based on the framework you follow, like NIST 853 or HIPAA or ISO 27001 or soft to type, whichever, right? So you have to have a baseline. So you have to develop that process. You have to come develop those policies. Then, then the policy then needs to be, you know, approved by the management. And that's how the whole program works. So basically, it's all about information security governance program, information security management. So that's in a nutshell, I was trying to explain you know, how broad a GRC it is. There are some tools available on the enterprise level, very expensive. That's just for the leadership. They want to see the one dashboard and how many applications in each and every group are compliant or not. So these kind of stuff happens there. But as you can see, there are four or five different layers and how this turns into different job responsibilities and roles. So if you are already in the tech, you can easily learning this skill, get into this area of practice if you're interested. Or you can spend some time, learn the basics and get into that. So it's not about configuring a router or a switch or a firewall or a proxy or an endpoint. You don't have to do that. What you do, you need to understand how these things are going to help a business to become compliant, address the risk or risk, reduce the risk or mitigate the risk or transfer the risk, improve the security, basically, of the overall. So these are the some fundamentals and that's what you need to understand. So literally, it does not require that you have to do coding that you have to learn how to set up, but you need to know good enough what this technology is. So there are so many best practices, so many core areas you need to understand. So I hope that helped. We'll end this video right here. And if you're interested, I can put some more videos around that. Let me in the comment, what part of GRC are you in? So I know about yourself. And if you're new, do let me know in the comments. I'll see you in my next video. Thank you and bye.